Let's see if the fault's gone. Okay, so I thought I'd have a little discussion about the fluids. Um, now for the AYC pump, it does make a difference actually what fluid you use. Um, you can't just use generic, automatic, transmission or power steering fluid that you'd get in a bottle like this. Um, doing my pressure tests, I actually found that the pump wasn't making full pressure um, due to the viscosity of the oil being out of spec, it was too thin. And the pump's not going to make the pressure, the clearances inside are not designed for a pump, uh, oil of this thickness. And uh, basically you're just going to get the same fault as you've always had by using the wrong fluid. I went to a big Evo specialist by me, Indigo GT. They actually supplied me with a couple of litres of this. Uh, this is Dextron 6. Um, they say they use it. Um, I have bought it, but I've chosen not to use it. Um, when I look at it, or I've put a bit in a, in a cap, um, the, um, it looks a lot thinner than this does. So I'm going to just use Dextron 3, which is very similar to SP3. Uh, SP3 is actually what you're supposed to use. Um, but SP3 is a Mitsubishi specific approval code. Dextron 3 is almost identical. Well, it pretty much is identical. Uh, from the research I've done, there's plenty of people using this with zero issues. And they tend to get issues when they're using other fluids. But most of the Mitsubishi fluids are just rebranded fluids that um, you know they've just put their badge on and charge a fortune for. So I'm going to use this. I've cleaned out this bottle so I can more easily pour it into the reservoir. So I'm going to basically fill this up with Dextron 3 and I'm going to pour it into the reservoir. Now that level will drop as we're bleeding the pump and also while it's sitting, air bubbles will begin to um, be removed. So step one was to turn off the ignition. Step two, if we look up here, we can see two caps and bleeder screws. We have to remove the cap from the left one and attach a um, rubber hose. Now if you're in the same position as I am, where you're either unable to take off the rear bumper or too lazy to, then you can actually um, disconnect these from their little clicking points on the bracket and you can reroute them and get them out. Uh, it's quite easy actually, it's probably easier to do that than to take the bumper off so I can have good access now to the pins for when I want to bleed the pump. Now we've got to pressurise the pump and when I was testing it I noticed that once this um, starts to fill up here we know that the pump is fully sort of bled and it's actually returning fluid back to the reservoir. Uh, we're not allowed to just leave it on running, we just got to sort of be patient and turn it on for a couple of seconds at a time. You can hear the pitch going higher once it's sucking in um, air. As soon as, that hap as soon as that happens, we cut the power. So although there's still a bit of air in that little loop there, um, I'm happy that the pump's pressurised because the pitch dipped. And just in case you've forgotten, this isn't generic fluid. I'm just using the bottle. There we are, I'm happy that's pressurised. I'm going to activate the AYC button on the box when the pump is on and that will actually open the solenoid and start sucking fluid through and bleeding the AYC loop. 
I wouldn't say I'm the thickest person in the world, but that was actually quite confusing the way that is um, laid out because you could easily mistake that 12 volt feed there for the left hand AYC. Um, so yeah, just something to bear in mind if you were using this box. Um, now then, I just got managed to get a little bit of fluid out from the uh, left hand AYC. So these are completely bled now, the left and right AYC loops. Um, just something to bear in mind, I thought that there was all the air would come out after about three or four seconds. But what I decided to do was bleed it again, and I actually found there was loads of air left in the system. Um, so I remembered then, obviously, when you're bleeding it, it's got to push through the old fluid, then the air, then the fresh fluid comes through. So just because you see a solid line of fluid doesn't necessarily mean that you've bled the system. So just buy a gallon of the stuff and just push a whole litre or two through each um, loop just so you can be absolutely sure there's no air in it. So I'm confident now, I've put a few litres through this, that there's no, um, there's no air left. Um, and another thing as well, if you stand in out, out the back of the car, um, you're just looking for air, but when you're underneath the car, you can actually hear the air bubbles going through the loop. You can hear them. So you can hear when all the air is out almost. So that's something I'd recommend. Actually get under the car while you bleed near. So I'm just going to tighten these up now and then we're going to move on to the ACD side of it. So now we got to bleed the AYC fluid for the ACD diff. Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find, so I'll try and show you where it is. It's basically on the transfer case. So there's the sump, and there's the drain for the bleed for it. Clearance is super tight, like literally touching the subframe. So it's quite claustrophobic, and I don't think I'll be able to film this. But just so you can see where it is, and it's pretty much the same steps as uh, doing the AYC. Okay, so as far as I'm aware, all the air is out of the system. I'm just going to plug in the pump now to the loom on the car, and then we're going to do a test start, and hopefully the light won't come on. So I think we're ready to go now. Car's on axle stands, so we can't go anywhere. Um, Let's see if the fault's gone. I'm actually quite nervous. I heard the motor go in. It's obviously charging up the pump. The pressure rather. Try once more. Let's go. Yes! Pressing the button. Awesome! It's done! Way! Hey, I've literally never have I had a go of this car with the AYC working. Awesome news, it's working. It seems to be working anyway. So um, 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a clean up. I'm absolutely filthy from lying around on the floor all day. I'm a bit fat these days as well, so I can't even fit under the car properly. So I'm going to put the car back together now. And in the next video, we're going to be seeing if I can feel a difference with the AYC working. It's a massive part of why I bought an Evo um, and the active centre diff. Um, it's what makes them handle so well, in my opinion. And I've never experienced it, so I'm really looking forward to getting to try it out. Um, my predictions are it's going to understeer a lot less. It does understeer a little bit at the moment, so uh, really looking forward to it. Hopefully it works for, you know, more than 10 minutes. So yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed that video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.